good evening everyone uh, thank you so much uh, for joining we're just waiting for a couple of minutes more before we start the main session simultaneously uh, since we have joined over here let me thank you all for giving us this most important time bite from yourself coming on the weekend and joining for a webinar which is based on the brand advocacy so the most important topic what we're going to talk about how the brands and brand advocacy is important and how to do that so most of the times we do it with the various marketing activity but then today we're going to talk around the loyalty be it channel loyalty or uh, the most important loyalty what normally industrial supply uh, industrial goods would like to do is uh, influencer loyalty uh, to influence the the sale and obviously the customer and retail loyalty and the, the the people who fall under the channel loyalty i'm sure we do, we all do some sort of a marketing marketing based loyalty uh, we we try to communicate to our customers we tell them about our product features uh, we give them quick cashbacks or loyalty points and various other things what come falls under the 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 loyalty domain but then today one of the most important thing what we are going to talk about is how the current situation is uh, in the market and how the dynamics of technology dynamics of uh, customer psyche going to play a major role in in having a digitized loyalty system for your brand some more one more minute before we dig into the actual content and uh, talk mm -hmm. about the things okay once again thank you for the people who have joined just now yeah. and uh, uh, today we have a, a sunera tech sponsored sunera tech driven uh, webinar on a influencer loyalty and brand advocacy thanks a lot to give for giving this time uh, and and listening us on what are we going to talk about uh, uh, and how are we going to uh, want you to connect it with our content which is on the digitization of loyalty and uh, and brand advocacy platform today on the platform on the panel platform we have uh, vinil wadi who is cto for uh, sunera technologies and apart from that he comes with a background and experience of implementing one of the most crucial and uh, strategic driven loyalty system for a uh, india's biggest paint company to india's biggest wire company or in that sense india's biggest fmcg firms also so he'll explain us today on how uh, the digital and digital Uh, is important to drive the loyalty program and the brand advocacy uh, initiative driven in the companies and he'll also share some of the experience and that how he has changed some of the organizations by implementing uh, technology and making sure that influencers are hooked up to the mobility based uh, loyalty systems I'm Mahesh. I'm I'm on the panel uh, as my name is Mahesh Gajeli, and we also have Sudhir, uh, who is managing director for Sunera Tech, and he comes with a background of a CPG, uh, track and trace, and uh, uh, loyalty implementation and various other technologies. What he has done throughout his career since the last thirty years. As an agenda, we're going to talk today about. how the retailer influencer on or in that matter how 
the channel has changed the the distributor retailer influencer customer and how tech savvy these people have become to adapt or or go and enroll themselves into a loyalty program and how quick they get on to the the usage to make sure that they get the maximum yield of uh, any loyalty program which is available uh, in their in their purview or in their vision we'll also talk about why the programs fail why the most of the loyalty programs fail most of the times we all implement loyalty program without looking at what kind of a tangible uh, we are looking for and just implement since because a brand a or brand b which is competing with me has implemented and that's the reason i just want to be into the bandwagon and start implementing loyalty so that can probably be a dangerous uh, then we will also talk about strategies of successful digital loyalty program we'll also talk about four improvements for brand loyalty we will uh talk about an ideal platform for a digital loyalty and its capability 25 most important capabilities what you would require in a existing loyalty program and some of the success stories what we have already uh seen and and who are getting a tangible uh return straight away so here is the emergence of tech savvy uh, retailer and influencer uh, so today if you see the influencer we normally uh, for us influencer or the person who actually make the sale okay for example if i am a painter uh, and i can paint the walls or i can paint the interior walls and exterior walls so i'll become an influencer for my customer to buy a particular brand or particular product so or in that sense if at all if i am a plumber i can be a influencer to buy a right pipe or a right pump or a right uh, uh, taps uh, the designer taps for your for your bath and bathrobes so influencer play a major role in uh, in some of the uh, product and product uh, uh, usages um, and they allow the the end customers to make a decisions of which brand they should buy so we see them that they are too tech savvy we see them that they are quick adopters uh, of loyalty program we see them that they are always in search of instant gratification they are very entrepreneurial in nature and incentivization and creative engagement drives their loyalty program so uh, we have seen influencers engaging with multiple brands uh, because of such kind of a characteristics what we are seeing over here again in retailers and salesmen's uh, area we obviously seen that they are tech savvy they adopt to the post systems they are also connecting customers on their social media uh, connecting them on whatsapp connecting them on a, a, a various other social media even in on in a, into the e-commerce and marketplace so that they make a maximum sales of whatever uh, products they are selling they are also a champion in merchandising to make sure that their locality their place uh, their set of customers have the right product what they are looking for in their shops or in their uh, warehouses or, or in their area what they are selling things incentivization drives the brand counter share so that's something which is one of the most important aspect for retailer and they are obviously very entrepreneurial in nature and would like to make sure that they make maximum out of whatever efforts they put in so why partner loyalty program fail uh, we have done some research around uh, this 
And uh, since we have implemented in some of the organizations and since we have seen how some companies championed in implementing the uh, digital platforms around their loyalty programs, uh, we know that uh, one of the most important thing in such kind of a loyalty uh, systems, the KYC and onboarding is always been a challenge. Uh, most of the times brands believe in technology so much that they immediately make their mobile app available and feel that it's going to immediately fly uh, by just informing everyone that there is something which is available on the app store, install it and you start using, scan the QR code or probably put the UID and start getting the loyalty part. So that's not that easy and you would need a backup support. You need a, a team which will constantly push this particular initiative. Uh, there are also siloed loyalty programs experience. So uh, most of the times when we, what we have seen is that uh, there is a standardization on a particular product year. There would be a standard uh, kind of a redemption which is happening and the, the influencers normally lose the track on it and they stop using it. We have also seen that loyalty for just a discount versus loyalty for the brand advocacy is one of the most key strategies. And many people go uh, on the first part, which is just implement a loyalty for giving a discount and not work on how we should build the brand advocacy. So that's something which we will talk about in today's uh, topics. Uh, difficulties in scan, earn and burn is obviously there. There are Sometimes you have a code, sometimes you have no OTP, sometimes there is a, uh, uh, other uh, restrictions which makes the, uh, the loyalty points gathering difficulty, which, makes the, which gets the friction in the community to drop your loyalty programs. Uh, then you have a loyalty can't be only on a mobile app. So that, that's another myth what we have seen that, uh, we need to have a multi-channel uh, loyalty. So sometimes it, it can work on a mobile app. Most of the time it works on a mobile app, but then we need to also have a, a channel where uh, people can still go and get the loyalty points without a mobile app subscription and there in the uh, system uh, registered as a influencer or a re retailer and gets the point. So that, that's also something which we will see because the crowd of a plumber or a, of an electrician probably are not that mobility friendly and probably we need to look into it also. Lack of longevity is also something which is a biggest concern on a, uh, on a loyalty program. So every time when a, when a person buys and how you will make them or entice them to, uh, to, to have the next sale and the next sale and the next sale. This is something which misses in the in most of the brand loyalty. And that is what longevity is something which is the most important part of making sure that loyalty programs succeed. Not setting a measurable, measurable goals is also something which we have seen that in most of the times there is a budget and there is a marketing initiative and we just go and deploy it because we have a budget. But then if there, there is no measurable goal which is seriously giving us the immediate sales uh, interest or probably increasing the sales and, and making sure that we get the advantage immediately. So that's something which is there. Complex program structure also makes people get away from the uh, loyalty program. Uh, and we all know that most of the brands normally launch it and forget it. We feel that uh, we just need to announce this particular thing and we forget and let the system run. So that's not the case. We need to refurbish. We need to always go and check uh, the analytics of it, the uh, interest of it, the uh, friction points of it, which is probably making anything uh, go wrong and keep a tab on the overall program. So these are one of the most important things why program fails. Uh, quickly, so this is what I wanted to talk here on. Uh, I'll give the podium to uh, Vinil and Vinil will take it up and 
explain you the world of the loyalty program. Over to you, Vinil. Sure, Mahesh. Hey, uh, thanks for that. And uh, hello, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. This is Vinil Wadi signing in from St. Louis, uh, US. Thank you all for taking the time out on a Friday evening uh, and joining us on this interesting conversation that uh, Mahesh has kicked off, right? Um, so he talked about some very, very interesting things, right? Um, he talked about saying how the retailer, the, the entire retail ecosystem, right, is getting uh, disrupted, right? So just, just from, a, you know, having, having worked with some of the top um, CPG brands, uh, some of the top industrial group brands in India, right, uh, which are more than about 100 years old, um, we've been there um, that, that, you know, in, in the last 50 years, right, uh, there's not much, there's not been much change at all in the way brands um, built or engaged with influencers or retailers or their distributors and the whole retail ecosystem, right? Um, you know, we've been following the age old engagement methodologies, we've been following the age old um, loyalty kind of programs, incentivization and so on and so forth. I think all that is getting disrupted with the emergence of uh, technology, right? What, what, what has worked for the last 30 to 40 years is not working anymore. Why is that? Because you know, what we have seen is three important things are disrupting this entire industry, right? One, number one is the choice or the, the amount of products out there in the market, the choice that the consumer has, right? The choice that an influencer has or the choice that a retailer has, the choice of product, right? It's becoming a highly competitive market out there, right? Uh, which is kind of um, diluting the market shares for a lot of brands. Brands who have been, I've worked with brands who have been, um, who, who are having the number one market share in a region for let's say last 25, 30 years, all of a sudden within a span of two, three years, you know, that market share started going down because of competition. So that's the number one factor. It's become a highly competitive market, right? So what that means is as a retailer, as an influencer, right, who's who's distributing your products or who's recommending your products, I have more choice now, right? That I can take to my customers. So that's number one. Number two is the emergence of, um, the, the emergence of e-commerce has played a key role, right? In, in disrupting the entire um, value chain. If, if you if you say right so retailers and influencers right now are um, exposed to an entirely new channel right in terms of how they can recommend products to their customers or you know they can get uh, products to their and that's number two number three is the entire mobile, revolution that happened, right? And then the uh, retailer and within the last five years, right? The retailers and the influencers have become extremely tech savvy, right? Um, and if you look at the adoption of point of sale systems, right? Um, whether it's your local Kirana, right? Or it's a slightly bigger kind of a retailer, the point of sale adoption has been extremely high, right? Um, you know, retailer, the, the dynamic of a retailer is changing because now, um, you know, I was reading a report the other day, um, you know, from, from leading analyst, right? Which said that 
most of the retailers within the next five years would 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 also be selling um, you know financial services products right um, they would also participate um, in the value chain right when it comes to some of the you know uh, uh, fashion uh, retail and and so on and so forth right so retailers as a as a, a, a the, the way there they were merchandising the way uh, their category or catalog is exponentially expanding right now with that what is happening is merchandising for a retailer has become the most important thing based on my location based on where where my shop is based sort of right and based on what my consumer demographic is i would want to only stock those products right because of the large availability of products right i won't be able to afford to kind of keep every other product out there in my in my um, retail outlet so these guys are becoming savvy they are looking at products that um, you know people from from around his outlet would be interested in buying and he's only stocking that now in that highly competitive market how do you make sure that you know your the the outlet has um, you know space for counter share uh, for your specific brand right so all these things put together like right, the the tech savviness so for example um, you know in a, in a I, i was working for another brand um, for them they did a survey and found out that about 5000 plus retailers right um they were actually taking orders and fulfilling orders on whatsapp right uh, within their community so you know interesting things like that um right in terms of how retailers are smartly putting technology to use right um, to kind of improve their business right? so that's so so i just wanted to spend some um, some time on the trends that are going out there and then in this fast changing realm of um or or disruptive realm of you know how um you know the the retailer demographic and and the influencer demographic is changing right so wanted to see what it takes right for the the old age loyalty programs right where you would you, you know you would kind of say you know i'll i'll give you Uh, a coupon and then uh, you take it uh, to an influencer and then you take it to a retailer and he'll give you money and then the retailer comes and redeems it back you know uh, to the brand that whole old age uh, you know old way of doing things might not work uh, might not be as exciting to the retailer or or the influencer anymore right so like like he said what are the characteristics right so what is um, you know mahesh talked about that right so what are what are your retailers and influencers looking for right they are looking for creative ways of engagement right um, they are looking for tiktok kind of right so they are all hooked on to all these tiktoks and 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 the engage and the entertainment quotient or the entertainment um uh, you can say threshold has 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 increased tenfold right so they want what they want now is creative engagement right that's number one because there's so much noise out there you know only certain ways of creative extremely creative engagement will stand out and will have a brand recall that's number one right now how do you do that number 2 is instant gratification right more and more whether it is entertainment whether it is um, reward right uh, whether it is um, you know um, it, any you know instant gratification has become the mantra right today if you see for brands 
um, right? So whether it is retailers or whether it is influencers, right? So these three characteristics, I think, is, is what the market is looking for, whether it is your retailers or your influencers. Um, it all depends on how well we are able to leverage these three and then roll out our, uh, you know, or, or build out our loyalty programs uh, with them. Right. So just wanted to spend some time yeah. So again, I think, you know, this uh, slide here, it talks about, right, how do we um, build a integrated program, right, that has better insights, right? So what does that mean, right? Um, you know, and, and the rest of the aspects that you see out there in terms of redemption, genuinity, improve visibility and business impact and ROI, right? So we've, we've heard about all this. Right, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing very um, you know innovative about this, right? But then, I think what is what is changing the game, right? Or what we have seen work out there in the market is with the advent of AI and analytics, right? Now, and a combination of a digital engagement and AI and analytics is differentiating your programs out there. Right? What, what do I mean by that? Right? So let me take certain examples, right? So for example, we work with one of the largest um, wires and cables uh, brand in India. Right? So what happened was, um, you know, they had an existing loyalty program, um, which was not very digital in nature, right? Uh, but then of course, um, you know, it, it had a lot of touch points, right, um, in terms of having physical coupons and then, you know, that coupon being uh, as an incentive coupon and then that coupon moving through the uh, value chain and, right, so they had a age-old standard kind of a loyalty program. Now, what was not working in that, right? So there are a couple of things that were not working, right? Number one, is how do you know? So because it was an offline program, they were not getting data, enough data to kind of you know, measure the effectiveness of their loyalty program, right? In terms of, okay, I'm in the wires and cables industry. Who, who are my electricians? Who are those electricians who are loyal to me, right? Who are the guys who are, you know, who have been with the brand for the last one year or two years, right? Or they've been um, consistently month on month, right? Uh, making sure that they are advocating for my brand. Who are the retailers, right? Who are increasing uh, the counter share for my product, right? Given that, you know, there are like, you know, 20 other brands out there, right? 10 of them at a national level, uh, 10 of them at a local level, right? Uh, maybe a local brand, right? So that data, with the, you know, because of the lack of data, you know, they had a very standard program, right? They were not able to measure. They had a standard program. And then, you know, they were like, okay, this is the loyalty. Every other electrician, uh, every other electrical company or a wires company is doing a loyalty program. Let me also do that. Right. But they were not getting any insight into whether it was working, number one, where it was working, what are the areas that, that it was working, what are the areas that it was not working, right? who, are, who are my biggest influencers, right? who are the electricians um, that, that are being loyal, very loyal to my brand. So this data was not coming in. Right? So when we put a digital strategy together for them, they started getting a ton of data, right? Now, who was buying, right? Or, or who, was, who was recommending, right? Who were the electricians that were recommending my product, right? Which regions had, um, you know, a good um, trend, right? Which regions were not doing so well, right? Which are the regions in, in a time period, 
right? So for example, during the festival season, right? What are the areas that were doing well, right? Where are the macroeconomic factors? So for example, um, for one of the, uh, you know, for the same brand, right? So we knew that, you know, some of the three tier and two tier cities, you know, that the brand was not paying attention to had a lot of development activity going on, right? Hence, you know, a lot of those new um, electricians were, were joining the program for the North, from the Northeast, right? You know, the brand never knew that, right? Of course, they had a distributor there. Of course, you know, uh, you know the, the sales in that region was going up, but then they didn't know why. They were not able to pinpoint which, which of the areas of the growth, right? So with the data, we were able to give a ton of in insights to the brand, right? Now that happened, right? Now, number one, the biggest advantage is, is, is the insight. Now, once they had the insight, then they became creative, right? What do I mean by creative? Then they started saying, hey, you know what? Why should I give everyone, treat everyone the same, right? Let me give more incentive to the guys who have been more loyal to me. Right? Now, because this was digital, the program became digital, they had the capability to pick and choose right, and, and configure a program in such a way that the guy who's been with them for a long, longer time, the more you influence a brand, the more incentive he would get, the higher incentive he would get. Right now, that saw a, a, a multiple effect. So that means the guys who were being loyal were getting excited, right? And they were becoming more loyal, right? So that means the brand now had a way of telling influencers and retailers that was the more you are loyal to me, the better uh, incentives that you will get from me. So that kind of changed the entire program, um, right? And instead of being a blanket standard program, right? That, you know, I had, because every other band was doing the same, right? So there was no, really no motivation, right? Um, a, a rupee here, less or a rupee more, but that's about it. But there's no real motivation level, right? So that got changed. Um, because now the, the brand had the capability to go into the system, into the platform, digital platform, and pick and choose scenarios like, hey, you know what? An electrician from Andhra Pradesh, right? Coming from Andhra Pradesh, right? Who has been loyal to me, who has purchased almost 50 boxes and above from Andhra Pradesh, if he is coming for the next time, you know, here's how I'm going to engage. This is the extra, or, you know, I'll move him to tier three, tier four, right? Where he'll get more incentive and informing that electrician that, hey, you know what? You've been loyal to me. So that is why you are, you, you know, you are getting better incentives than other electricians. And, you know, here's a bonus for you. Right? So that kind of scenarios kind of saw a real, impact right and then we saw very quickly within six months we saw that you know people who were three time buyers were becoming six time buyers right people who are 10 times buyers were becoming 20 times buyers right within a span of uh, two to three months right so that's how it had a very positive impact on their entire uh, so just wanted to make sure that you know while the language on the slide is, all, you know, I just wanted to bring in a flavor, right? So the flavor of you now digital means, number one is digital means you have data, right? You have insight. You have insight into what's happening, right? Now, because you have that insight, you now you have control. Okay? So you can better control and personalize your entire program. So I think by personalizing, it has a tangible impact on your entire, 
you know uh, sales and and tangible outcomes right in terms of you know how um, you can you can use loyalty as a powerful tool to increase your market share to increase your counter share with retailers and to increase your brand loyalty with the influencer i just wanted to kind of leave you with that yeah so here's what i was talking about again i think um, the new age if you were to look at a new age um, loyalty program that you want to roll out what were what were the things um, that it would encompass right so again going back to some of the things that i was talking about right so using ai right um, as as a tool yeah right, um, to do several things right so one using ai to kind of predict you know what's happening and where should i take my marketing dollars or loyalty dollars and where should i invest right what are the regions of focus for me where am i doing well where am i not doing well how do i shift some of my investment from the areas that i'm doing well to the areas that i'm not doing so well right what are the product categories that skus that i'm not doing well right how do i boost that right at an sku level um you can make those intelligent decisions at a uh, at a location wise at a geo level geographic level you can make those decisions right so that's the power of ai and insights that you get right and how do you how do you put all that together is having a, a single glass pane view or a dashboard right where you are able to get a real time view into what is happening within my loyalty program right so having that kind of a data at your fingertips right and having the dashboard and the platform to make those to go and make those changes um in in a dynamic environment right you know is 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 the key to the or the cornerstone to the success of the new age uh, loyalty programs that you might see now some of the very often right you know um what are the other what is the downside or 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 you know what are the other challenges that um most of the brands face right so the number one is you know what um there has been you know my loyalty program is very robust but you know uh, you know uh, some of the uh, participants or some of the um, key stakeholders in that might be misusing the loyalty entire loyalty program this is we hear this very often right um you want to make sure that your marketing dollar is your investment is 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 done well it is not taken advantage of and then there are no leaks in the system right so that's why it's important for you to make sure that right uh, this is a full proof security system that you have in terms of not have not letting anybody take advantage of this program right and the loyalty is actually reaching the right or the deserving audience right so how do you do that so we have security features so that means you will have a very strong um identification mechanism in terms of you know identifying who is it um where is that electrician or retailer right or who is he um is he new in the system right has he has he purchased before has he done a kyc uh, is there a trend of you know somebody taking advantage in the system right so because now it is digital you have all these signals coming in and then you know we can put in algorithms right where the system will alert you let's say you know if if it finds a trend of you know one particular user or a particular retailer or a bunch of retailers in a specific region misusing the program because you have the data now you can you know get those alerts right and then you can kind of you know invest more time in investigating where those red flags are right so again going back i think the corner store or or why why digital right that's that's the question everybody has right so people might say my loyalty program i've been put in the market for the last 20 30 years right it's been working why do you think it doesn't work now right so i think that is the key the key is that your retailers your electricians are changing right 
as a demographic, they are changing, they are becoming tech savvy, right? Um, they want instant gratification in anything that they do, right? And they are, um, you know, they, they, they will stay engaged with creative engagement methods, right? So I think that's, and, and, and personalization, right? And that's the only way that you can differentiate. Now, how do you enable that? How do you do that? One is to make sure that your program is digital in nature, right? And why, why should it be digital? It is digital is important because you need that data for you to make sure that you are making the right decisions. You have complete visibility and control, right? So summing up, I think that's, that's the key message on this, um, right? So uh, this is just a profile in terms of uh, some of the leading brands that we've been working with, right? Um, and then um, very, very fortunate enough to have worked with some of the um, leading brands in India, right? Um, in, 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 I must say Asia because we went outside of India, but I think, you know, our core expertise has been in understanding um, the Indian market and not only Indian market, in understanding um, the specific industry segments, right? Um, and how they, you know, how those ecosystems are shaped, how they are getting disrupted, right? Um, industrial goods is a different story. Uh, consumer products group is a different story, right? So we were kind of very, very fortunate to have worked with them uh, hand in uh, glove with them, design some of the most successful loyalty programs right out there. So that's they just wanted to give you uh, an idea in terms of you know what our capabilities are across verticals, right? Um, we work with FMCG, some of the leading brands in FMCG. We work with some of the leading brands in um, industrial goods, be it wires, cables, paints, right? Um, FMCG um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, we've connected more than, um, right? So on a monthly basis, right? So we connect to thousands of, we are connecting brands to thousands of retail partners, right? Retailers. And we do um, every, on a monthly basis, right? So we do millions and millions of uh, uh, loyalty engagements with uh, influencers, right? For a specific brand. I think there is a question, right? Okay. Vinod has asked a question, right? Yeah. So Vinod, um, you know, I'll cover that when we are going through the, yeah. When we are going through some of these slides, Vinod, I'll cover yeah, that. Yeah, Ravindra has asked. So Vinod has put it, Ravindra has asked. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Ravindra has asked. So sure, Ravindra. So so I'll yeah. All right. Got it. Okay. Good question. So I'll uh, talk about that. Yeah. So in fact, you can see here on this slide, right? You know, um, we'll we'll answer your question, right? So what are the typical traits of a digital loyalty campaign, right? So like I said again, the four cornerstones of digital, right, is one. Mobile, mobile is number one for you to build a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Right? So what does mobile mean? So mobile means many things, right? So mobile means not just the mobile app. Mobile means WhatsApp, right? Mobile means TikTok. Mobile means text messages. Mobile means voice, right? So mobile means mobile apps, right? So do we have so on the device on the mobile device how can you engage right so every every influencer and retailer has a mobile phone right there's right uh, if somebody is not there then you know somebody doesn't have a mobile is living under a rock right so how do you engage right given this power of mobile how do you engage with them right so the corner store is engagement is mobile right so building a one-on-one -on -one relationship on is using his mobile device is one of the cornerstones, right? That's number one, right? Number two, is your loyalty mobile, 
So whatever engagement that you're doing, right, uh, with him, either giving him loyalty points or, you know, sending him a message saying that, hey, you know what, uh, especially for you, for the next 15 days or two weeks, right, here is a, here is a bonus points, right? So I will give you, you are getting 10 rupees per electrical wire box that you sold. Let me give you 20 rupees for the next two weeks, right? Because it's festival season and you've been very loyal to me. Here's a bonus for you, right? That's number two, right? So, and how, how are you communicating that? You're communicating that using his WhatsApp because he's agreed to engage with you on your WhatsApp, right? So things like that, right? So where you are moving beyond you know what your traditional thing is and you are you you are where your influencer is or your retailer spends his time he spends his time on tiktok he spends his time on whatsapp right can you engage with him there that's number one right and then like i talked about the ai driven insights right where we understand channel performance and refine it you have the capability to uh, refine it in flight right now and, and of course, you know, I talked about how we can have a dashboard, right? To gain real-time visibility and control, right? So this is, these are the four cornerstones and, and of course, Ravindra, um, yeah. So to answer your question, apart from surveys, like I said, mm, okay, so let me, let me first answer Ravindra's question, right? Um, yeah, so like I say, do you have tools and techniques? The question is, do you have tools and techniques to gauge loyalty apart from service, right? So like I said, now every, every other interaction that if you are truly digital, every other interaction that you have with an influencer or a retailer, we consider is as an engagement, right? So that's, that's the key. So once you have this kind of a data, so what are you, what, what are the kinds of trends, right? And, and I'll talk about those trends as we go forward, right? So we are trying to, once you have data, you are trying to kind of predict in terms of using that data, predict the effectiveness of your loyalty programs. So what does that mean? It means that, for example, in AP, Mr. Krishna Reddy, who's an electrician, right, has been a very loyal customer uh, or loyal influencer because he, on every, on a monthly basis, he's, he's recommending more than 50, you know, wires and cable packs every month. Now, what has happened, right? That was last month. This month, it fell down to six. Why did it fall down to six? What happened, right? Is there, is, you know, what was the reason for that, right? So every engagement, digital engagement, is an insight into saying, you know, how is how is my loyalty program working? Is it personalized, right? And what is happening there, right? So that's number one. Number two is, um, what is, you know, what is working? How do you know that, right? So today you have three, uh, dimensions of measuring your loyalty program, right? Number one, the geography. So you're saying, hey, you know what? Where is my loyalty program working best, right? Is it the west? Is it the east? Is it the north? Is it the northeast? Where is it working? And where is it not working? Which of the regions is not working well for me, right? Now, because it is digital, because, you know, the, the entire interaction with your loyalty of your influencers or your electricians is digital, you are able to get that uh, insight, right? That's number one. Number two, on from your product scale, right? So I'm sure you must have more than half a dozen product categories, right? In Within that, those product categories, how is the loyalty performing, right? Which product has more traction in which geography, right? What kind of 
um, you know, and, and, and what kind of programs or incentives for that particular product or category of products or SKU uh, should, should you focus on, right? So for example, um, uh, an electrical company could have wires and um, cable, and then they must also have switches, right? And so on and so forth, right? So for them, um, it becomes important that, you know, based on, they, it becomes important for them to track their loyalty program and tailor their loyalty programs based on their product category also, right? For switches, you know, maybe you just launched switches recently, right? That SKU, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, you incentivize uh, for differently, right? So that's how you are able to get a lot of data, right? And that's number one, right? Number two, you are able to kind of say, hey, you know what? Using transactions, you are able to kind of get a lot of uh, data on that. Yeah. With so many loyalty, so I hope I answered that question. I'll go into a detail of uh, Ravindra of it in the next uh, uh, five, 10 minutes. But yeah, with so, so many loyalty programs being driven through AI, digital, how do you differentiate? Yeah. So loyalty programs, yeah. So there are two kinds of loyalty programs, right? Um, this is Kuldeep, right? Yeah, so Kuldeep, there are two kinds of loyalty programs today, right? One is for your um, direct-to-consumer, big box retailer kind of loyalty programs, which are dependent on point of sale, right? So what does that mean? It means that these are the typical um uh, modern outlets right so we call them uh, the modern retail outlets or the big box retail outlets kind of formats where consumers can walk in and you know they can buy and then you you know you share your mobile number at the at the point of sale and then you know you get registered into that program right and so on and so forth right so that's one kind of uh, right which is the um, which is the connected experience that, that you are seeing, right? Uh, that's one. Second is, how do you, the, the way um, we differentiate is, one is that in a non-POS environment, right? How do you how do you engage, right? So you have your influencers, right? So who are um, right, so who go buy from a Kirana store, right? Um, your local Kirana store, right? Or your local hardware store, right? How do you engage with him? Right, there is no point of sale. You know, he is not giving his mobile number every time. Right. Once your mobile number, he gives his mobile number. There is no loyalty program in the back calculating his loyalty points and giving it to him. Then how does it work? Right. So that's where I think you know we differentiate where we are saying um, it doesn't need any point of sale within right within the entire digital program. That is number one. Number two. I have really not seen any Kuldeep. I have really not seen any, any solution out there, right? Which is where you have truly used, right? I'm not just saying, you know, AI for the word of using AI or digital, right? No. So I'm, I'm saying half a dozen of the biggest, you know, we have run loyalty program for some of the biggest, biggest brands, right? So India's biggest FMCG brand, right? We work with them, right? And I have not seen any solution which has actually truly used the power of AI to tell, to give recommendations and decisions on how I should personalize my loyalty program for, you know, my retailers, right? So I think that um, that that becomes extremely important. Right? So that's number two, right? 
Number three, from a differentiation standpoint, I think, you know, I'll cover in terms of, you know, what we have done as Kuldeep, we've put a, having done this multiple times, right, we put a, a checklist in terms of saying, if you are running a digital loyalty program, what are the capabilities that it should have, right? And, you know, I'll cover that in, in the next five to 10 minutes, okay? Yeah. So, all right, good. Um, so what you see on the screen again here, right? So what, what should some of the high level capabilities of, you know, how your digital program should look like? So one, it's focused in trade loyalty and trade campaign, right? So from a loyalty perspective, right? You should have the capability to, the flexibility to set up your program, right? In, in, um, and, and, and manage it, right? Uh, using a dashboard and using the tools, right? That is very important. Right? And then of course, the trade partner performance management is again an insight that you need, right? In terms of how you set that entire program up, what are the tiers, the loyalty tiers that you want to uh, define, right? And, and um, so on and so forth, right? I think Kuldeep had a question. No, no, so that's not what I mean, right? So loyalty programs work. So the focus, the focus for this uh, particular webinar, Kuldeep, is about retailers and influencers. Right? Yeah. Of course, for end consumers, yes, perfectly, you know, there are um, uh, loyalty works well, but then again. Um, can you go back to the slide? I didn't finish that, but yeah, just Kuldeep to answer your question and make this more interactive, right? So, of course, the loyalty works well with uh, consumers, right? But then uh, look at it like this. Let's say um, you are you are uh, doing uh, you are a wire and and uh, cables brand. I keep going back to that, but okay, let's take a paints brand, right? So. For industrial goods sector, building a loyalty, a consumer loyalty for a paints brand is extremely difficult, right? Because you know that's a you won't paint your houses every day, or you won't buy a you know your uh, wires every day, right? You don't buy your taps every day, or you don't do your tiling, bathroom tiling every day, right? So. In, in that segment, I think, you know, um, consumer loyalty, uh, rather than consumer loyalty, if I were an industrial goods company, I would focus on the influencer loyalty who's an electrician, plumber, or a, um, uh, or a mason or, or a carpenter, right? So we work with uh, so many other uh, leading brands, right? So uh, within the paints and adhesives and all that, right? So that way i'm saying for industrial goods it makes more sense to build my loyalty around my retailers which is the hardware shops and for my uh, influencers who could be the painters and so on and so forth okay. so depends on the industry segment that you are in of course you know fast moving consumer goods yeah there have been successful loyalty programs but yeah so Loyalty, I think, works best with, um, you know, some of the um, retail scenarios, right? So where rather than the brand, you are, you are loyal to a specific retail outlet, right? Uh, be it an online retailer or an offline retailer, loyalty programs work best there because whatever you are purchasing, right? Uh, retailers have a plethora of brands and then, you know, that's what we see, right? So that's what we see at Shopper Stop. We see at, you know, other fashion apparel retailers. You know, that is where I think consumer loyalty has worked best. Right? Hopefully, I was able to answer your question fully, right? So today, I think, you know, we are focusing on influencers who can influence your brand and retailers who can... Uh, increase the counter share within their retail shop for your particular brand. Hopefully that made sense. 
Yeah. So moving on, I think, yeah. Um, so like I said, again, the cornerstone, um, having a robust loyalty program, right? And having that the platform that has the capability to, you know, set up a multi-layer program for you, right? Define at a very granular level saying, hey, you know what? Um, uh, you know, let's take an example of saying, if a painter is a first time guy, right, that is coming and, you know, recommending my product to a consumer, right, then I'm going to give him, you know, 10 rupees per uh, box, but as a joining bonus, I will give him 10 rupees more, right, and then, you know, every time he buys, you know, I increase his, uh, uh, you know, loyalty, and then I'll, um, I will make sure that I message him that, you know what, hey, if you, if you were uh, successful in recommending 10 more paint boxes or tins of paint, you know, you will increase your loyalty to, you know, 12 rupees per box, right, from 10 rupees, right? So earn more, um, you know, if you recommend more, right? So having that consistent communication with him, right? Um, on his WhatsApp or on or on his text or on his phone, right? So that improves, right? So you are able to kind of construct a program like that, a loyalty program like that, where at an individual level you are able to kind of say, okay, every every loyalty member is unique in my system because I have set it up like that, right? So that level of capability and granularity is what is needed. And then on the campaigns, like I said, um, you have a dashboard and based on the trends, right? And segments, you can move your investment, right? So you can move your marketing dollars from one market segment to another market segment, right? So um, you can move your investment from one SKU to another SKU, right? So like that, you have the flexibility and then you can move back. Right. So, and then of course, campaigns um, where you are able to drive a campaign, right, uh, based on predictive campaign, based on saying you can actually go and um, give the system rules in terms of saying how it should, uh, based on the results, right, um, you can actually, um, you know, uh, kind of customize your entire loyalty program based on the results, right. So you can say, hey, you know what, um, my loyalty redemption limit for Telangana region is this much, right? For this month. Once it reaches that, you know, then, you know, we fall back to, you know, whatever is the normal loyalty points that you give, right? So things like that. Yeah. So again, uh, here AIML, again, trade performance, trade partner performance, which is a retailer performance, a specific territory or an account. And then you can actually hook that up to your sales organization and then, you know, bring them into the thing, right? Uh, and then make sure that, um, you know, let's say you are doing your influencer uh, painter meets or electrician meets, right? So you can actually trigger these events too by bringing in your sales organization, you can trigger these events, right? So you're saying, hey, you know what? in my system, if uh, the redemption falls below certain percentage, right, then the system should be able to send out an alert to the regional uh, sales team, and then, you know, give them recommendations on saying, hey, you know what, I think a brand meet is needed, I think a retailer workshop is needed, I think uh, uh, a painter meet is, is, is needed. Yeah. All right, let's let's go forward. Yeah, I think Gaurav Sharma. Means, okay, yeah. No, that's a that's a that's a great point, right? So that's a great point, right? So that's that's where I I was talking about saying brand advocacy is important, right? And differentiation is important, right? Now, so there are two things, right? So yeah. this is exactly the problem, Gaurav. Right, I was talking about. We all do influencer. We are all doing influencer programs, right? Now, how are you doing it, right? So today, the way it is, is in the market, and, and I might sound a little harsh, but in the market, oh, 
uh, this brand A is giving 10 rupees per can. Okay, let me give uh, also 10 rupees per can. Right? And then it's, it's, an open, it's, it's an open book for everybody. Right? Every brand, everybody knows what the other brand is, is doing and then it, it has become a standard and there's no differentiation. Right? Where is the differentiation? There's no differentiation. Right? So that is driving, you know, that, you know, what it is doing, ending up doing is it's not a differentiator. So he's not very interested, right? So he's just saying, okay, uh, for, at, at, for that moment, you know, whatever the brand is, you know, he's, or he's depending on, uh, you know, whatever the consumer is asking. Right? So, but I think two things, right? So one, the entire incentive differentiation has to come in, a personalization has to come in for him to feel excited. That's number one. Number two, I think the amount of time that we spend in educating the customer, um, you know, be it, you know, BTL or ATL the dollars that you spend, I think that has to rechannelize into, you know, influencing the influencer so that means you are you are able to create you know take advantage of the social channels that he's on today right how many programs or you know how many engagements have you written specifically for tiktok right for your influencers right how many um, kind of uh, digital meets did 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 you do uh, using whatsapp right I think using uh, the, those kind of creative engagements, right, with your influencers, I think that that will be a, uh, a game changer for uh, brands is what, what I'm thinking and what we have seen also, right? So, um, yeah, no, so, so we did, we did a lot of those creative, right? So we did, um, insurance programs right for being very creative right so for a specific region um you know you know there was research from the research team of the brand right where they were able to kind of research and and say that you know what um for this specific area i think health insurance seems to be a big drive driver for them right so the brand then you know joined hands and then we did that entire thing uh, we did uh, uh, women empowerment right programs at one of the largest beverages right the most successful campaign right uh, where bite sized learning used to happen on whatsapp for uh, women entrepreneurs right so that became a big influencer those guys became a big influencer for the brand right um, the brand ended up giving them certificates and all that, right? So uh, I think some of the very creative ones using the uh, digital uh, channels, I think that became advocacy from an advocacy standpoint, right? And then of course, differentiating your, uh, personalizing it and differentiating your loyalty program is the cornerstone, I can say. So maybe yeah, I answered your question, but yeah, Gaurav, if you have any comments, we can we can also have a <laughs> uh, good good observations. We can also have an offline chat, you know, and and debate more, right, on this. Yeah. So uh, you know that's exactly the point of this slide that you see here, right? So building a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a trade uh, channel or um, or an influencer is the cornerstone, right? Now. Before it was not possible, right? Because technology was not there, right? How could you build a one-on-one -on -one relationship? You know, let's say you are having five lakh, uh, you are engaging with five lakh electricians. How would you do a one-on-one, -on -one, right? I think that is the beauty of uh, the uh, digital, going digital, you can personalize, right? You can say, hey, you know what? I, I have 50 different personas into which I will divide my 50 lakh electricians across regions, across their purchasing habits, across their um, SKUs that, that these guys uh, promote, right? So like that, you know, you can come up with 50 to 100 different profiles and then segment all these guys, right? All your five lakh guys, so that they feel it is very personalized for them. Yeah.
some of the benefits that you see when you make it um, when when you drive digital right so these are some of the trends that we have seen there is a tangible increase in in the in the market share right um, in 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 the retailer uh, outlet share right so yeah all right let's move forward absolutely got off right so the sentiment analysis so so that's what i was saying right so ml driven targeted campaigns that that is what is highlighted here if you see that is what is highlighted in blue right so machine learning using machine learning to read through data right uh, to do sentiment analysis on on you know whatever surveys that you have or uh, or any voice campaigns that you know people are calling in leaving messages or right? we can get as creative as possible but having the tools to right having the machine learning algorithms right to um, you know kind of uh, glean insights from them i think will help all right um so the the cornerstone of you know uh, some of the loyalty platform features that you need right um you know those are the those are the features that are shown here you need um a complete uh, online system you need a web based uh, system where you, there is a loyalty manager where you can manage your entire loyalty programs right um you should be able to do mobile couponing right um you should be able to reuse your loyalty programs right um you should have tiers and point management and then i, I talked about dynamic rule based loyalties right so that means you are able to kind of uh, segment your entire um audience right uh, into personas right and for each persona um we would be able to kind of see uh, some of the right and 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 kind of do that right so omni omni channel you know we talked about that right um and having a single view uh, is extremely important single real time view is extremely important it's also we have seen the most important thing is that your loyalty platform has to be closely integrated with any erp custom um crm or any other solution that you have out there so that you are able to kind of get a seamless view uh, enterprise view right across this okay so again uh, what you see here uh, ai insights so i can't um i can't talk less yeah i can't not talk less about ai the significant of uh, significance of ai and analytics right so um how are we using these right so so how how are brands using ai and machine learning for, to what purpose are they putting it to right so one is to gain a real time program performance right in terms of how is the loyalty program working across regions across my product skus and so on and so forth right so that's number one number two um when i am configuring a program right based on my past program performance can i predict the outcome of this particular campaign right that's important right so am am i so so that means the system is becoming more and more intelligent right in in giving you recommendations on let's say you want to do for sankranti which is a south festival right celebrated in telangana and andhra pradesh for sankranti for that very localized period right region and period if i do a campaign how will it look like right so will the system have the capability to take the previous trend data and make recommendations to you right so that's that's important um and number 2 is figuring out who are the non returning partners or right so who are those people who are stuck at you know who participated who started off with my loyalty program and then they never showed up right right and if they never showed up at what point did they abandon my campaign or loyalty program right so all that right so looking at 
having that ability to visually look at right who is that segment right and then how do i reengage and reenergize them right the capability to do that i think is is of paramount importance for you if you want to have a sustained engagement across loyalty programs otherwise yeah it becomes you start off and then you end up with you know 10% or 5% of your initial audience base yeah and then you are saying okay as a result what is it right so um has there been tangible uh, increase lifetime in 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 lifetime value of the products being recommended by an influencer or the products being sold by a retailer so good um, so those are some of the salient i think capabilities when you talk about ai and uh, and and insights and analytics in how it can help you make better decisions yeah 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 okay so yeah so from a from a retailer perspective i think you know what all um, from a platform capability standpoint right um, like we discussed you need a strong partner contact and profile management right capabilities right and then you are able to uh, map that to your entire sales organization make them a part of the not just the marketing but the entire sales organization is accountable for the loyalty right um, and then you are able to um, you know uh, map the sku wise kind of right so you are able to go at an sku level and then you know kind of configure those uh, campaigns right and then of course um, the control the digital reward and wallet management which is a key piece right where um, you you have the capability to digitally reward whether it is the e wallet you are putting money in as paytm or you know uh, any any other digital way so that is the key where he is able to get instant gratification whether you are putting money in his bank whether you are putting money in his digital wallet right uh, which we do which we figured out right um yeah so so those are some of the i think uh, key features that for retailers uh, when when you talk about loyalty program can you go to the next one yeah so i think we discussed this right um, in detail again but you know we'll share this you know whoever participated will share this deck with you right and then you can sure. go in detail yeah all right go to the next one yeah so i think i'll just spend 2 minutes here if you were to i think um, kuldeep and gaurav were alluding to this fact earlier right so if you were to look at what if if i were to make this whole digital platform right uh, if i were to put this what would be the characteristics right of this digital uh, platform right so that's what you know we kind of having engaged with several uh, brands and having driven successful programs i think we kind of put all our learning together and said okay what does an ideal platform look like what are the 25 capabilities that that you absolutely cannot you know uh, live without right uh, when you are building this platform right so that's that those are some of the features that we said right um, of course if having that complete ai uh, machine learning capability and putting it to use right is the number one right um and then of course having that entire uh, flexibility to kind of uh, set up and personalize campaigns and loyalty programs is is number 2 number 3 is having the capability to in integrate with social media the complete suite of social media platforms out there where your retailers and um, and influencers are today right and then engaging them through those channels right um we'll see will yield more more results right um and then getting creative on those campaigns right so for example we talked about uh, referral promotions right uh, we talked about brand advocacy in terms of you know how how do i measure um you know some of the advocacy 
um, uh, out there, right? And then, um, you know, capabilities like, you know, can I dissect, right, my entire, uh, you know, stakeholder ecosystem of retailers and influencers by region, by um, loyalty behaviors, right, by, um, you know, a specific uh, demographic, right, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the, uh, go to the next one. Yeah. So I think, yeah, from a, these are more from a key features of a digital platform, which will enable you to um, uh, kind of have that, have that power of digital um, to kind of put a holistic program together, right? Whether it is um, your capability to uh, design a, a, a dynamic program where, you know, the more I, I, I recommend a product or, or uh, as a retailer sell your product, I earn more, right? Um, putting it, making it very creative and getting excitement into the program with flash um, announcements and flash bonuses and, right? Uh, and then flash competitions, right? Um, uh, making a WhatsApp group of, you know, a particular, a specific, uh, locality, right? And then running some uh, co contests on that, right? And then announcing the contest winners on WhatsApp within that community, right? So these are some of the capabilities that really excite, uh, right? And then have a very, very strong brand recall uh, and, and uh, brand affinity, uh, whether it is a retailer or a electrician. Yeah, go to the next one. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. So uh, this is a case study that that just I wanted to talk about, right? Um, so this is one of the oldest um, wires and cables companies in India, right? Uh, they had a, they were one of the, they had the biggest market share not even 10 years ago, right? So they had about like 80%, 85% market share. Right? Um, and then um, they had a very traditional loyalty kind of a program running, right? Uh, so what was the program? The program was a retailer um, would get a coupon uh, for the secondary pack and then the electrician would get a coupon in the primary pack, right? They would take that coupon. Um, if it's an electrician, he'd take that coupon, deposit it to the retailer. He would give some 10 rupees and that, that, that ends the matter. For the retailer, again, you know, he collects all those coupons, goes to the distributor, you know, puts it there, right? And that's the end of that. Yeah. So this was, this was what was happening, right? And then um, in a competitive environment, right? Uh, the brand realized that uh, going forward, I think it's going to be a crowded market with a lot of options, right? And a lot of localized options, right? Two, a lot of private label coming in, right? Uh, giving a lot of options for the um, consumers. Yeah. So then uh, subsequently what happened was that, you know, we kind of engaged about seven years ago, we engaged, right? Uh, and, and then they said, hey, you, you know what? We want to kind of uh, transform this entire thing, right? And make sure that we have a very, very meaningful um, brand advocacy and loyalty. Um, with our uh, consumers, uh, with, with our influencers, right, and retailers. So that's when we came in, we kind of uh, used um, the entire digital platform, right, and we did three specific things, right, using the digital platform. One, like I said, we said, okay, let's not, let's do away with the standard across the board, or giving a 
you know, whatever. I'm just giving an example, giving 10 rupees per box of electrical wires. Let's let's make do, let's do that away. Let's throw that out, right? And then we said, okay, we'll personalize. So what does that mean? It means that I'll have a different experience if I'm the first time buyer or, or a first time influencer. I will have a different experience if I am second time, third time, so on and so forth, right? So it means it became personalized. Number one, we personalized, both for the retailers as well as the influencers, right? Now it became personal. Now we started seeing action, right? Now we started getting into which region, where, who are the electricians, right? Um, you know, who are dropping off, who are the one consistently participating, right? Why they were dropping off, right? Now the field sales also had a ton of data. Um, the, the regional uh, heads, sales heads had a ton of data now to go after and say, hey, you know what? From this region, I don't know why, but there is very low participation. Let's go to uh, painter meets, right? And uh, sorry, electrician meets or retailer meets, right? And, and that whole thing, you know, we kind of energized, uh, we, you know, using, you know, again, digital messages to them and so on and so forth, right? Now, we started like that um, using um, just text. When we started, it was SMS driven, this whole thing, but it was highly effective. Now, today, that was seven years before, today, you now it's a completely digital program, right? With one of the largest electrician participation and the retailer uh, participation in the program, right? And we saw tangible results, right? So that means um, we have one of the most active, um, you know, uh, electrician loyalty programs in the country, right? And that was, that was largely uh, driven by the the leadership, I should say, the number one, the number one success factor for this is the leadership was um, they had they they had the vision, they had the courage to uh, you know embrace digital very 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 early on, right? Otherwise, it, this would not have happened, right? Uh, so, I think the credit goes to the vision uh, for this company, where the top management was able to clearly sit up and say. Hey, you know what, if I'm not going to do anything, I'm going to lose a lot of market share to competition, right? So, and, and, that, pro, and, and that prudent thinking is what um, has, has uh, given uh, kind of shape to this entire program. That's the case study number one. Any questions I can take? Okay, so the next success uh, story we have with a, uh, a double oil company, based out of uh, Hyderabad and operating in South majorly. And uh, obviously they wanted to have a, a track on uh, what kind of a district and uh, uh, which area they're selling well. And uh, how should they make sure that they customize based on the performers versus uh, the districts which are not performing. And uh, uh, for this, they, they opted with a solution backed up with the BPO setup. And uh, we, we created the, the platform to make sure that product campaign happens based on the SMS. Uh, there's a multiple communication channel, which will be on SMS uh, and various other things. Post that, we obviously had a, a scratch card and accumulate and redeem the mechanism uh, of the loyalty points. And that benefited uh, the, this company to have a sales increase by 5%. Uh, retailers were quite happy and they were uh, reordering quite well. Uh, and, the, and the system uh, worked them with the immediate gratification to, to see the sales increase. And uh, that's how uh, the success story of a, a FMCG based edible oil, FNV uh, vertical, uh, this platform did well in. Okay, so these are the two success stories. And uh, meanwhile, I'll I'll uh, ask Vinil if at all if you can take a question from uh, Sumit. Uh, did you uh, take a question on Sum Sunit, uh, uh, Vinil? 
Sunit Mehta, where he says, how much, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I think we've come to the fag end of the presentation. Yeah. So yeah, yes, we yes. can go ahead and we'll open it for question Q&A. Perfect. So last slide, this is how it looks like. So you can, you can go and read it. And uh, uh, obviously, Vinil has spoken about multiple companies and multiple verticals and how the successful loyalty campaign uh, firm looks like. Uh, so let's open it for a Q&A. So please come up with your questions. And uh, we would be glad to uh, answer your queries on uh, how to uh, adopt a technology, go into a digital, uh, implement loyalties. Feel free and be open for Q&A. Uh, 